What we're going to be going over here is governmental fund accounting and we're going to be looking at budget revisions. And we're going to be looking at determining the effect here of our budgetary fund balance based on those budgetary revisions here. So really what we're going to be looking at is how we calculate our budgetary fund balance. Okay, so let's look at what we're talking about here for governmental accounting and when we're looking at a particular fund here for governmental accounting. So what you're going to have here, and I'm showing it in T-account form here, where you're going to have your inflows here to your budget, where I'm showing them here on the left-hand side, again in T-account form, and those are inflows coming into the governmental body here for that particular fund. And then over on the right side, I'm going to show the outflows coming. Those would be the expenditures. Inflows would be like our revenues coming in. Outflows would be like our expenses. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we have to determine a budgetary fund balance it, what they call an unreserved amount here in the budgetary fund balance. And that's really the difference between our inflows coming in here for the budget versus the outflows going out. Okay, so we're going to look at setting up that budget and looking at changes here, or uh, changes in our budget estimates for a certain period or during the year here. But before we get into that, let we're going to make a point here about those, our budgeted items here have opposite debits and credits as at least as increases and decreases from our normal entries for our ledger accounts. Now in the budget here, nothing really gets recorded here, except we're going to be looking at uh, revising the budget here and how we make our entries here. But what, you, what we're going to be looking at is our debit and credits here versus, let's, let's look at this estimated revenue control. The revenues coming in here, uh, budgeted revenues that we have coming in. And let's look at it versus the, actu uh, the revenue control in our ledger accounts. This is where the actual transactions are going on. And just to understand our debits and credits here. Normally for your revenue accounts looking at uh, uh, what you'd see here in accounting, you're going to see that credit is going to be an increase to your revenue, whereas a debit amount here is going to be a decrease. But when you're dealing with the budget, you're going to have to set it up just the opposite. A debit here is an increase, whereas a credit is a reduction. Just looking at the, uh, the rev actual revenue accounts here, your ledger accounts here, you can see the difference. Credit plus uh, in the revenue accounts, credit minus here in your estimated uh, control for your budget here for revenues and the same with debits debit minus here in your ledger accounts debit plus here in your estimated revenue control for the budget and the reason they do that here is it's for comparing the budget to your actual transactions here so say for a man example here you have a current amount here of revenues here coming in for all your revenue accounts here at 475,000 so you have a credit plus here, and then you can compare it to the budget here. In this case, you had a debit or an estimated amount here of 500000 So it's easy to do your balancing entries here, looking at comparing your what your actual amounts are to your budget amounts. Now, if we move over, let's make move over to our expense side here, our outflows here. Those would be our expenses here, and same thing appropriations control you can look at it here those are outflows you're going to have a debit minus versus the actual transactions those would be the expenditures control in your ledger accounts you're going to have a debit plus so for the expense this is typically what you're going to see for expenditures here of course would be your debit plus credit minus now for the budget just the opposite debit minus credit plus just to make that point here so there's no confusion so let's first off let's see what's Let's set up this budget. Let's just go through our accounts so we understand what's going on. So we'll start with our inflows here, and we'll look at uh, starting with, again, the but we're going to be looking at inflows versus outflows, and we'll start with our beginning budget, what we're initially estimating here. So we have an estimated revenue control account here for the budget. Let's just say we have a debited here for $500,000, initial estimate. So uh, revenues here are revenue inflows. Those are increases that do not have to be repaid. So we've debited that here for $500,000. Now, moving down to our estimated other financing sources, that's our other account for our budget. We're going to say we have a debit amount here of 300,000. That's what we're estimating here. So what we're talking about, estimated other sources here, those are the source inflows. It could be like for issuing long-term debt, selling capital assets, or any inner fund operating transfers in. So let's just say we estimated that to be 300,000. So we have a total amount here of revenues coming, inflows coming in as revenues here 
uh, and other financing sources here at 500,000, 300,000, total of 800,000. Now moving over to uh, our expense side here, our outflows here. We'll start with the budget here. You're gonna have to determine your appropriations control for the budget amount. And let's just say yeah, we credit it here for $450,000. Now again, those are the expense outflows. That would be expenses that are authorized by the legislative body here as expenditures. So that's what the authorized expenditures we're estimating to be in estimating that we're going to make here of 450,000. Then the other thing we'd have in our outflows would be estimated other financing uses here and we're going to estimate or credit that here to be 275,000. So at estimated other finding uses, those would be the source outflows that would be interfund operating transfers out to other governmental funds. So what we have sitting here on our outflow side, 450,000 plus 275,000 is actually gonna be uh, 725,000. We'll go look at it. So we've got 800,000 here in our budget sitting on our estimating here coming in as inflows, 725,000 as estimating outflows here. So this is where this budgetary fund balance comes in. And it, the unreserved, it's called unreserved. So either anything in excess here of our inflows versus our outflows can become unreserved. There's really no, we don't have any uh, a specific requirement on these funds at this time, no obligations on those funds. So uh, in this case of the 75,000, so if in what we're talking about, the budgetary fund balance here is if the estimate inflows are not equal to the estimate outflows, then you're going to have either a debit minus or a credit plus. So in this case here, again, you're looking at your inflows versus your outflows for this budgetary fund balance. The inflows that we had here versus our outflows here. So we, we're going to credit that here for $75,000 when we, the original estimate here on our budget. So if you go over here, you can see we had inflows of uh, $500,000 here plus $300,000, total of $800,000 inflows versus our outflows $450,000, $275,000 for $725,000. Make the comparison here. You're going to need a crediting amount here of 75,000 to balance your inflows with your outflows. So the credit goes to our budgetary fund balance here for the original estimate here at 75,000. Just so you understand what's going on here, the 450,000 plus the 275,000 plus what we have to credit here in our budgetary fund balance of 75,000 equals our outflows here, our inflows here, the outflows of 700, uh, with the budgeting amount here of 75,000 adding to our other our outflows here equals our inflows here of 500,000 plus the 300,000. So everything balances out here as long as we credit or increase our budgetary fund balance here by 75,000. So we had that that uh, credit here of 75,000 brings our outflows up to well the with the fund balance we had to come uh, increase our outflows by that, or increase our but our budgetary fund balance by seventy-five thousand here. So our credit to our outflows here equals the debit to our inflows. Okay, so that's how you set up the budget. Now let's go and understanding the budgetary fund balance here for when we initially set up that budget. So it's really inflows versus your outflows gives you your fud budgetary fund balance. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at we're going to make some real we'll make some changes in our estimates here so looking at estimate of revenue control let's just say we have an extra 10,000 coming in for we're estimating coming in for revenue so we increase our estimate of revenue control up to 510,000 so a debit amount this is where it comes in handy just using your debits and credits here between your your budget your budgeted accounts here versus that budgetary fund balance. So you get the debit here of 10,000. So where would the credit go? The credit's gonna go to our budgetary fund balance. Credit that here for 10,000. Debit 
our estimated revenue here for 10,000, credited our estimated fund balance for 10,000. So easy enough to do here. Now let's go down to our estimated other financing sources here. So let's just say we have a re reduction to our inflows here of 25,000. So we credit our estimating uh, financing sources here by 25,000. So that's going to leave us with a balance of 275,000 in our estimated other financing sources account here. So take a credit amount here of 25,000 in your uh, other financing sources budget account. So the debit is going to go to the budgetary fund balance here of reduce it by 25,000. So your fund balance is being reduced here by the fact that you're, you have a reduction in your uh, reduction in inflows to your other financing sources by 25,000. Credit here, uh, 25,000 debit goes to budgetary fund balance here by 25,000. I'm going through a lot of numbers here, but just to understand what's going on to see how simplistic, simplistic this can be when you have to determine your budgetary fund balance. You can go through it real quick here. So let's move up to our appropriations control here. Again, those are the uh, expenses that are budgeted here. So let's just say we were sitting at 450, 450,000. Let's say we increase them, we credit, we're gonna have an ex extra ex but, uh, expenses here 50,000. So we're gonna increase our appropriations control by 50,000 from 450,000, balance is gonna be 500,000. So where does our credit go here? We credit it, our appropriations control here by 50,000. So what, the debit is gonna to go to the budgetary fund balance here, debit it or reduce it by 50,000. So you can understand Let's just understand what's going on here. So we increased our appropriations control, our expenses that we expect to spend here by 50,000. So that's gonna actually reduce our fund balance here by, uh, by 50,000. So it makes sense here. Uh, and let's just, let's just understand here, maybe go back to our estimated revenue control here. So we increased, let's just say we, when we increased our revenue here by 10,000, that means our budgetary fund balance should also increase by 10,000. And when we reduced it here by 25,000, that reduced our inflows here by 25,000, that means our budgetary fund balance should as well be reduced here by 25,000. Just to understand the logic here. Okay, so going back to our outflows here, let's look at, we've taken care of our appropriations, control our expenses. Now let's look at our estimated other financing uses here. Those are the source outflows, inner fund operating transfers out to other or other governmental funds. So let's just say we're sitting at 275,000, so we're gonna reduce it here by 30,000. So we're gonna end up with a balance here of 245,000 in these other financing uses account. Okay, so debit here reduces our estimating other finances uses by 30,000. So the credit is gonna to go to the budgetary fund balance of $30,000. So we reduced our outflows here by 30,000. So that means we're gonna be increasing our budgetary fund balance here by 30,000. So we went through four changes here in our budget to the, our really change here in each one of our different accounts that we would have here for uh, uh, setting up a governmental fund, a f budget here for the governmental funds. Just remember you have to determine your estimated revenues control, uh, and your estimated other financing sources, those are the inflows, versus your appropriations control, which is the expense, and then your other financing uses here, which is also expense. Those are everything going out, this is everything coming in, and then the fund, budgetary fund balance is the difference between your outflows and your inflow. So a debit is a reduction, anything that goes in as a debit here is a reduction to your budgetary fund balance, and a credit is an increase here in your budgetary fund balance. So just remember, just follow through your debits and credits. So if you had just the opposite, you had some increases and decreases, whatever you're doing up here in your budget accounts here, any debit, any changes, any debit or credit amounts, then it gets balanced with your budgetary bud fund balance, whatever the appropriate debit or credit would be. So, okay, we determined what our original budget was. We had a 75, thousand uh, dollar actually surplus here or unreserved amount here an extra seventy five thousand because our inflows here were greater than our outflows now let's look at it at the end here it's gone down a little bit we can just look at all our debits and credits sum everything up and we're going to come up with a balance here 
of 40,000. Okay, so let's go and just look at what we've done here. So we remember we went through our, our original budget here and determined that we needed a credit balance here of 75,000 to uh, balance our inflows with our outflows here. Now let's look at our revised amount. Say our inflows, we can go back and look at them. We had uh, we had an inflow here of, of 510,000. Well, originally we had well, revised. We had 500,000 here. In, well, we had inflows. We have let's look at it. We have five hundred ten thousand here plus two hundred seventy five thousand here adds up to seven hundred eighty five thousand here. Those are our inflows here. And now our outflows. Well, we had what? We had five hundred thousand here and two hundred forty five thousand here adds up to seven hundred forty five thousand. Making the comparison between our inflows here and our outflows, we're going to have to come up with a credit amount here to our outflows of. $40,000. So that's where we got our balancing amount here, $40,000. So you can look at it in these gross numbers here, just looking at you, comparing your inflows to your outflows for each of your uh, budgetary accounts here, or go through it and do your debits and credits here. So either way, you're going to come up with the, uh, whatever you're going to end up, you have to determine what's sitting this a uh, budgetary uh, fund balance, the unreserved amount here is what we mean by unreserved here. If you have any credits here, you're showing uh, that that's where you're going to have more funds coming in than uh, expenses that you're looking at here. So you're going to have, they call them unreserved here because you haven't really determined in this case where those expenses are you didn't actually spend that in this case budget to spend this extra guest case the 75,000 but in the case here where you got a debit minus that's where you're going to have a reduction you're actually spending more or receiving less than you actually want depending on how you look at it okay so again when you see it 75,000 here or 75,000 credit here and 40,000 credit there is a change but in this case either the you have greater inflows and less outflows. Okay, so just to go over it one more time here, when you're setting up that budget, just remember, look, set up your T accounts here, understand your inflows here as estimated revenue control accounts versus, and plus your estimated other financing source accounts here, those are your inflows, and then you have to determine your outflows here as appropriations control, those are your expense outflows here, and versus and plus your estimated other financing uses here as an outflow so looking at comparing your inflows to your outflows debit and credit amounts you have to come up with some balancing amount here to determine your budgetary fund balance okay so that'll really summarize our topic here a lot of numbers to go over but if you go through it and you lay it out in this fashion you understand what's going on